morning, folks. We have come into the presence of the Lord to worship Him. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to get our eyes on Him. And we're going to worship Him. But just before we do that, I'm going to ask Philip if Philip would lead us in prayer this morning. Amen. Philip, I did. Lord, we just thank you for another day, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that we're able to come into your presence, Lord. We just thank you that we've got something to sing about, Lord. We just thank you for our salvation, Lord. We just thank you that you went the whole way to Calvary for each one of us. And Lord, I just pray as we come here this morning, Lord, that we'll just set aside everything that is happening in our lives throughout the week, Lord, and our focus will just be in you, Lord. As the worship team lead us into praise and worship, Lord, we pray that you bless them, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we would be worshippers of you, Lord, and I just pray, Lord, that you would just know you here in a mighty way for the children's talk. We just pray, Lord, that you bless your that, Lord, for the time right uh, communion, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that again, Lord, we just get just a fresh realization of what you have done for each one of us. And for pastors, he shares your word, Lord. I just pray that he would know that blessing from on high. So, Lord, just be with us and pray, Lord. Lord, we pray for those who aren't able to be here this morning, Lord. Uh, through sickness, Lord. Lord, we just pray that you'd be with them. Uh, for those who are bereaving, Lord, that you would just be with them as well, Lord. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, your blessing upon this service, which we really ask you, Lord.
never fails. He's the one that's with us in every situation and every circumstance. We have we have white me with us this morning and we just want to honor what God has done in his life. As a young man, almost 49 years ago, he left this church to go out and serve the Lord. And God has been faithful to him and to his wife. All right through those years. We just want to pray for continued strength and blessing. The anointing of God to rest richly on him. That you will continue to use him mightily, Lord. In Jesus' name, may he know your peace and your presence with him in a mighty way today and be built up and renewed and refreshed and blessed. Think of Kyle as he goes to her at walk. We thank you for a young man on fire for God and with a desire and a passion to serve God. I pray, oh God, that that, that, that passion will never decrease. Lord, it will increase and you will channel him and use him and bless him. And we pray that you'll undertake for him as he goes, give him good friends. Pray for the Alan and Catherine and Jack as they're left at home, that you will draw near and you will speak peace into their souls and that you will minister to them. But thank you, Lord, for Bethany, Sarah Nesbitt being born. And we thank you for your goodness to us as a fellowship. We bless you that we're gathered in your presence. Just think of those today that are mourning when you draw near and comfort them. For those that are sick, will you lay your healing hand on them and raise them up? And Father, will you just bless your people and do them good? In Jesus' lovely name we ask you. Amen. Amen. So I started skating again this week, and I'm not going to lie, I was really looking forward to it. I was looking forward to getting out of the house, but I was really, really looking forward to getting away from the hen houses. <laughs> but skating had changed. There were so many new rules put in place that weren't there before. We had to wash and sanitize our hands. All the desks were separated, and we had to stay a meter away from other pupils. But why were these rules put in place? What was the actual point to them? And it's simply to protect us and others. So that got me thinking about things that protect us from getting hurt. So I have a volunteer who's very kindly going to model for me. <laughs> <laughs> So first of all, I have my life jacket, my very, very, very orange fluorescent life jacket. And this protects me from drowning in water. It's also very bright so I can be seen at all times. And next I have my bicycle helmet. And it protects my head if I were to fall off my bike. And next I have my shin guards, and these protect my shins. If I'm playing hockey, if they get hit with a hockey stick, or if they get kicked. And finally, as of 2020, the most compulsory item of protection, something these are all wearing, the mask. And this protects us from spreading bacteria to other people. And all these things protect us. But they aren't always there for us. If I were to walk down these steps and fall and hurt my head, my helmet wasn't much use. It didn't protect my head. It wasn't there for me when I needed it. But there is someone who is there and protects us all the time. In fact, he will never, ever leave us. He will always protect us. And that's the Lord Jesus. And he has been protecting people for years upon years and will protect people in years to come. 
And in the Bible, there are so many stories of people that God protected. And Daniel was thrown into a den of lions because he refused to stop praying to God. But God didn't let Daniel get hurt. He protected Daniel. And then there was David. And everyone was afraid of the giant Goliath except for David. He heard Goliath insult God and this made him really, really upset. So David fought him with only a sling and a stone and God protected David. Finally, when King Nebuchadnezzar commanded everyone to bow down to his image of gold, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego didn't do it. They refused. They knew it would displease God. So they got thrown into a fiery furnace. But God protected them. And not even a hair on their heads was singed. And today, this world has so much evil in it. And it's comforting to know that God has promised to protect his people. And we must always remember that God is more powerful than the devil. And when we make him our refuge, our place of protection, we have a security in him. God wraps us in his love and protection. But that certainly doesn't mean nothing bad will ever, ever happen to us. Of course bad things will happen. All these Bible characters experience bad things. They experience trials. But they weren't sitting around doing nothing, just waiting for God to protect them, expecting him to protect them no matter what they did. They were out glorifying and working for God. But we will also all face trials of our own. But it's not to make our lives miserable, it's to strengthen our faith in God. If I had no faith in this life jacket, if I didn't 100% fully believe it would prevent me from drowning. I wouldn't get into the water. What would be the point if I knew it wouldn't protect me? And it's the same with God. We need to fully rely on Him. We need to strengthen our faith through these trials in order to fully rely on God and have faith in His ability to protect us. Mm -hmm. And in Psalm 91 verse 4 it says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find shadow in the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust in Him. For He will rescue you from every trap, and He will protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with His feathers. He will shelter you with His wings. His faithful promises are your armor and your protection. Just pray as we would. Turn to your word that the Holy Spirit will come and make it real to each and every one of us, we pray. Lord, that you will open your word to us today. You will reveal your word to us. You will write your word on our hearts. And Lord, that uh, your word will find good ground in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. We're we'll turning to Ephesians chapter 2. This morning we're reading verses... 5 to 7. <clears throat> Even when we were dead in trespasses, He made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Wonder if you ever wonder why God has done all that God has done for us. You know, we're so blessed to be in Christ this morning, aren't we? Amen. And we consider all the wonders and all the kindness and the goodness of the Lord and the love <laughs> that the Lord saved us from and kept us from. And how He intervened in our lives and has led and guided us. 
But have you ever wondered why God did all that for us? We have the answer in verse 7. You see, God wants to show the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness towards us to the generations to come. God wants us to be an example of His wondrous power, His glorious grace. And it's in order that in the ages to come that He might show the surpassing richness of His grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. He has made us alive. We found out last week that He has mixed our lives with Christ. And so we have the life of Christ mixed into us. He has raised us up. Glory to God. And it's just as sure as we were there. We can look into the future and say. And I know that I'm going to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you know something? We need to understand. And we need to get a revelation of the wonder of what it is that the Lord has done for us. He has transformed us. Hallelujah. He has empowered us. He continues to empower us. He has made us alive. And he keeps us alive. And he pours his life and his grace into our lives. He has caused us to come into him. And he has come into us. And in him we live and we move and we have our being. We are so blessed. We are so blessed above all people. And all this he has done that in the ages to come. That people's eyes might be turned and they might see and hear of the exploits that God has worked through our lives. Awesome. Awesome. You see, we need to understand that there have been many ages and there will be ages to come. You see, there was the age of the church when the church came into being and God moved mightily in the church. Then there was the Middle Ages. I wonder if you've been aged in here. I wonder if you settled in here. Have you got into your own routine? Maybe you need shook out of it. Maybe you need shook out of it. Maybe you need your routine broken. Maybe you need to get a fresh touch from God. Then there was the dark ages and nothing happened. And then there was revival. Glory to God. The age of revival. These were God swept all over this world in mighty revival. There are all sorts of ages. We used to live in the age, they say, before COVID, and now we live in the age of COVID. <coughs> Listen, I want to tell you something. We're living in God's day. We're living in the day of His might and power. And we need to come to an understanding of that. We need to understand that there is no equal and there is no rival to the Lord. We need to understand that God has his great love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we need to understand that and no matter what age we are in, there's a cleft and a rock for us. Do you know we used to sing years ago, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flow be of sin a double pure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands. Nothing in my hand I do. Simply to thy cross I cling. And here we are in this age today. And we need to get back to basics. We need to be clinging to the power of the cross. We need to be calling on the Lord. That he would change our lives. That he would show us who we're meant to be. And that we would live as the people that we're meant to be. You see God has chosen us. That he might show his mighty power through our lives to the world out there. That we might be different. That we might be different. God has chosen to move in the lives of ordinary people and make them extraordinary. Amen. He doesn't leave us where he has found us, but he comes in and he moves and he shapes and he, he does great things. God has placed such great treasure within earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Hallelujah. We have got a power within us that is the power of God. Amen. All that we would learn to allow the power of God to flow out through us. We have been chosen by God for His glory to show forth His greatness in the ages to come. 
Jamie Phillips put it like this. He has lifted us right out of the old life to take our place with him in Christ in the heavenlies. Child of God, we live on the earth, but we're heaven bound. Glory to God. We've got an address down here, but our home is in heaven. Our home is in heaven. You know, all who are saved, glory to God, are being raised up with Christ. And one day, we're going to go to be with him, which is far better. You know, his was a physical resurrection. But we have been spiritually resurrected. We have been raised up in our spirits and in our souls. And all that we would understand that there is a day coming when our redemption is going to be culminated. There's a day coming when we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Where all things are going to be made new. You know what 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53 says... We shall be changed in a moment. Glory to God. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. And perish. Glory to God. And we shall be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable. And the mortal must put on immortality. Do you know something? Check the God. The moment that God calls us to be with Himself, everything is going to be changed in that twinkling of an eye. And the things that we have problems with will be problems no more. This is our hope that He has secured for us, that we have this intimate, indissolvable union with Christ. Colossians 3 and 12 says, If then you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things that are above. Do you know we need to learn to be those that look unto heaven? We need to be those that seek the things above. Not get caught up with the things in this earth. Not get weighed down with the things in this earth. Do you know something? Sometimes we chase all sorts of things in this earth. And, and we want bigger and we want better. And we need to understand that we're just passing through. We need to understand that we're going to glory. We need to understand that we have got an opportunity to live for God and to lay up treasure in heaven. And I tell you something, friends. It's only what's done for Christ will last and it's only what's done for the Lord will count. You can have all. But I'll tell you, when the Lord comes or the Lord calls, It's only what's done for him that's going ever going to count. Now we, the scripture says, have been seated with Christ. And what a privilege. What a privilege. You know, a number of years ago, uh, it was the year that, that the Northwest didn't run because it was really, really wet. And fart were sprayed oil around the course and, and there was no race. But the night before, there was a pre-race event and they brought... Uh, five world champions in motorcycling uh, to the Northwest, and they put on a thing at the Macroboy Hotel. And I was given tickets to it. Well, I wasn't given tickets, I was to call, told to go to the door and I would receive tickets. And to our shock and to our amazement, my father and I went together and we were ushered up. To sit on the front row in the middle of these world champions. In fact, going down in the car, the father said, In my day, so and so was a great rider, and such and such, and he named three of them. And whenever we went up and we sat down, the first boy who turned around was the one that he thought was the best. And he was sitting beside him, and there we were sitting amongst these world champions. And they all started telling stories, and they started tell them intimate things about their lives that they would never have told whenever they were up there. And there we, we, there we were sitting amongst them. I tell you, we thought we were some boys. We thought we were something else. <clears throat> Listen, I want to tell you something. We're being seated in heaven in places in Christ Jesus. We need to know who we are. We need to know who we are. Did you ever walk into an hotel or something and someone important sitting and they see you and they make eye contact with you and they look at you and they go. And you walk over and say, take a seat. I want to introduce you. 
Imagine that the Lord one day is going to look at us and he's going to say, Hey, Graham, come here. Come and take a seat and sit down by Moses. And we're just going to talk here about the things that we see done in life. Huh? Hey, Andrew, where did I tell you? Come here, son. Sit down there. Where did I tell you? Lord, Barbara, come here and sit beside me. Because I, I, I just want to introduce you to a few of my friends. Glory to God. We need to understand that we are the cold and chosen of God. We are precious and we are special in His sight. We need to know that it's God that's calling us. And we're going to sit in the heavenly places. We have been made alive through Christ. We've been raised through Christ. And we're going to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, did you ever sit down with someone? Uh, and you sit there for a minute or two and you feel a wee bit awkward and you say, right, I better go down. And say, no, no, sit there, sit there. I, I, I better go. I have things to be doing. Listen, spiritually, friends, we need to learn to be seated up with Christ Jesus every day. We need to learn to come and sit at his feet and to be seated with him and not to rush away. Not to rush away. That we might be those that hear from God. And that we might be those who receive from God. I heard somebody talking about somebody one day and they said, I hate them. I hate them. And he said, because you know something? You see, every time they get along with so and so, they're changed. I wonder, does the devil hear us? Because every day when we sit with Jesus, we are changed into his likeness. And we receive from him, and we hear from him, and we're built up, and we're re-energized, and we're charged, and, and we're made useful in his hand. And, 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 is, is that what the devil is thinking of us? We need to learn to, learn to sit with the Lord and to understand that we have been seated in heavenly places. You know, uh, so often we think, oh, I'm just poor wee me. No, you're not. You're born again of the Spirit of God. You're inhabited by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is living in you and He's moving in you. And He's shaping you and He's molding you and He's using you. That He goes, He's going to bring glory to His lovely name. So we need to learn to spend time with Him, to open our hearts to Him and to share with Him. We live here on earth. And we exist on earth. But I'll tell you something. I'm glad for the time that I can get away from earth and I can get into his presence. I know what it is to be seated with Christ in heavenly places. Where I can get away from the hassles and the troubles and the trials and the things and the people that would bring you down. You know we used to sing, it doesn't matter where you live, where Jesus is. Tis heaven there. Tis heaven to know your sins forgiven. Oh, I tell you, we, we need to know who we are. We need to learn to draw aside, to come aside, to sit in his lovely presence, to sit with him, to commune with him, to receive from him. We need to understand that we're coming to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You see, the Queen of England exercises power. Because she sits on the throne. Donald Trump exercises power because he sits in the Oval Office behind the desk in the White House. But we need to understand that he exercises all power because he sits upon the throne and he will never ever be removed or dethroned. And he says, come and sit with me. I tell you, we are so privileged. We are so privileged that there is a door that is open to us that we can come right into the presence of God and we can sit with Him and we can receive from Him. Child of God, I, I want you to lift up your eyes with me. Lift up your eyes to the coming King and see Him for who He is, that He's the King of Kings and He's the Lord of Lords. One of the most comforting things that I had in my mother's death was this. She hadn't opened her eyes in days. 
She was lying in the bed and they turned her around uh, and they turned her around and she was lying. And about an hour before she died, she opened her eyes and she hardly blinked and she just eyes wide open looking to the ceiling. As if she says, he's coming for me. I'm looking for him. I'm looking for him. What are we looking for? What are we looking to him? What are we receiving from him? You know, lift up your eyes to the coming king. By before a man the door of him, there's no one like him. Oh, that we would look into his wonderful face and we would see the one that has saved us by our grace. You know, our redemption came from heaven. Our victory has been won and our destiny is in heaven. Spurgeon said this. It takes little faith to save your soul. But it takes mighty faith to bring heaven into your heart. All oh, that we would learn to praise God and open our hearts to the Lord. All oh, that we would experience the old hymn. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross my Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away. My night had turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Oh, we need that to happen more often. We need to learn to lift our eyes towards heaven. We need to learn to open our hearts towards the King of Kings as we sit in His presence and allow Him to fill us and to lift us up. Do you know I tell you something? When you get into the presence of God, there is an upward draw. There is an upward pull. He lifts us up. He lifts us up. Hallelujah. He draws us into His glorious presence. This world is not our home. This world is not our own. We're aliens and travelers. We're exiles in a foreign land. But glory to God, there's a land that is fair by day. By faith I can see it afar. The Savior, we had so the way. And you know that's where we are going to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With loved ones that have gone before us. And they're waiting on us. And I tell you, it will be no time at all. No time at all. There's coming a day when the snares of this age aren't going to affect us anymore because we're going into the presence of the Lord. Charles Simeon was an old time preacher in the 19th century. He lay on his deathbed. Everybody was gathered around him and somebody says, Mr. Simeon, what gives you great comfort? Charles Simeon looked at them and he says, I tell you what gives me the most comfort. He said a very strange thing. He says that God created this world and all that is in it. And they looked at each other. That was not what they were expecting him to say. Charles Simeon saw his friends' puzzled faces. And he looked at them and he says, This is why I said that. Because if God can make all the wonders of the world, if He can make the Grand Canyon, the Niagara Falls, all the wonders of this world out of nothing. <laughs> Glory to God. He's going to be able to make something out of me. And that was him lying on his deathbed. That was him lying on his deathbed. Do you know something? God's not finished with you. I don't care where you think you are in life. And I don't care how far down the road you think you are. I want you to know. And God is going to still do something in your life and with your life. And then in an instant in a moment, we will be transformed. Glory to God. Made into his likeness, filled with his grace. Oh, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be changed. That's why John exclaimed, It has not been revealed what we shall be, but we shall be like them. Glory to God. When He comes, we shall be like Him in an instant and in a moment. You know, glorious prospects await for those who have trusted Christ for salvation. God is not finished with you yet, child of God. He has still great things to do in you and with you and through you. 
We just need to be those that turn our eyes upon Jesus, learn to come and get seated in heavenly places in the spirit with him, and allow him to minister into our lives, that we might go out in the might and the power, knowing that we have come from the throne room of the message. In the old times, heralds were sent out with communications from the throne. And they went boldly and declared what they had been told. Oh, that we would learn to come from the throne of God with the glorious message of the gospel in our hearts. Tell people the truth and the reality. So, what do we do? You know, in the words of the old, old chorus, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. The things of earth shall grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Oh, that we would see him that we would know him, that we would hear from him, that we would understand who we are as the children of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I just want to pray in closing. Lord, I simply pray right now in Jesus' lovely name that while you prepare for us a place, Lord, would you prepare us for that place? Would you touch our hearts and make us more like you in order that we might be seen in the world in which we live? It's God's name. God's women that bring glory, and honor, and praise to your love and you. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Let's start.
mercy. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for that great assurance that we have that no matter what happens in this life, we are safe and secure in your hands. Amen. No power can pluck us from your hands. We thank you that Jesus Christ has assured our eternal destiny. And we thank you, Lord, that through faith in you, we are as sure of that place in heaven as if we were already there, because in the Spirit we're already seated with Christ in those heavenly realms. And so as we go from this place today, we pray that we will go with your blessing upon us, with your hand upon us, and with the anointing of your Spirit upon our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.